KSL News starts now. The only job I have as a nurse is to keep my patients safe. No, we're done. We're done. Shocking body camera video from Salt Lake City capturing headlines around the nation. A university hospital nurse arrested after she said she was just doing her job. Also this morning, chilling audio just released from a shooting inside a Salt Lake City federal court. The sounds of chaos as a suspect on trial lunges at the man testifying against him. And in the South, the overwhelming process of picking up after Hurricane Harvey, while the search for those missing intensifies on this Friday morning, September 1st, 2017. Now over to Grant with a look at our forecast. Hey guys, good morning to you. Nice weather expected today. We had those dark clouds past couple of days, right? The scattered showers and storms. They are uh, now out of the picture as a high moves in. And so actually with the clear skies this morning, it's, uh, it's a little cooler out there. You might notice the difference in some areas. So kids heading to the bus stop, maybe, maybe a light jacket, maybe not quite that cool. 67 to begin, 88 at lunchtime or recess time for the little kids. Uh, things are looking pretty good. Lots of sunshine and through the afternoon, mostly sunny. Getting hot again by the time they head back home at 3 o'clock. Uh, should be about 90 degrees. Clear skies this morning thanks to this high that's centered to the west of us. And uh, it's going to keep us in the clear today. Temperatures about where we topped that yesterday. Uh, we're in the lower 90 range here, 92 in Salt Lake City. Price stops at about 85, 90. Cedar City, lots of sunshine. Labor Day weekend is here. A three-day weekend for many. And the temperatures, they are going up. I'll tell you how much hotter. That's coming up in the full report uh, in a few more minutes. Andy Farnsworth right now, though. We'll take a look at the freeways one minute after 6. Hey, Andy. Good morning. Look at a nice start we've got going on I-15 this morning through Kaysville. No slowdowns through this stretch. In fact, none at all between Brigham City and Salt Lake City. Even that southbound delay that we've had most of this week because of road work just south of South Willard and uh, into North Ogden, that's not there today. Good start on I-15 in Salt Lake County as well. Here's a live look at the 215 South Interchange. But northbound lanes don't get any busier than this between Provo and Salt Lake. Tonight will be a different issue, but this morning we're off to a nice start. No, we're done. No, we're, no. we're done. You're under arrest. Yeah, we're going. We're done. This is recently released body camera video, and it shows the controversial arrest of a nurse at the University of Utah Hospital for not allowing police to draw blood from a patient. Now, that nurse says officers did not have a warrant, but the Salt Lake City police officer is under investigation this morning following that disturbing video. New specialist Caitlin Birch alive this morning up at the U Hospital with more on the whole story here. Now, Caitlin, a lot of controversy surrounding this video. It is getting some national attention now. What do we know happened here? Yeah, that video extremely troubling. Andrew, Salt Lake City Police even calling it alarming. And as you said, there's an internal affairs investigation underway right now. All of that happened behind me at the University Hospital's burn unit back in July. Alex Wubbles was working. She's a charge nurse there, and she was working her shift when she was handcuffed and put into a patrol car for approximately 20 minutes. She was arrested when she refused to give a detective blood for an investigation. As you can see the disturbing body cam video, you can see her even explaining to a detective that he didn't have the right criteria for taking blood. He didn't have a warrant for it either. And he wanted it for an investigation after a truck driver was severely burned after a head-on crash with a car that was fleeing from Cache County cops. That no, truck driver, done. not a suspect here, and he was we're unconscious done. when he was taken to the hospital. The only job I have as a nurse is to keep my patients safe. A blood draw is not, it just gets thrown around there like it's some simple thing, but blood is your blood that's your property it was alarming um, immediately after seeing the video they started an internal affairs investigation to look into what happened and as i said about 20 minutes after she was arrested and put into that patrol car wobbles was released no charges were ever um, put against her for this um, police have since updated their policy when it comes to getting blood samples from the hospital and training is scheduled for police officers and that's what Wobble said she hoped for she hoped there'd be more training and discussion with police officers she has not filed any charges with police agencies involved in this disturbing matter back to you guys all right Caitlin Birchall live in Salt Lake City for us as we continue to follow this story again that is making national headlines in other local headlines this morning, recently released audio of a shooting inside a Salt Lake City federal court is giving us now a better idea of what happened back in April of 2014. Listen to this. Get 
terrifying sounds there of gunshots and following those gunshots you hear someone say drop the pin out of your hands tough to hear that audio there but it all happened while 25 year old Siali Engelau, a known gang member was on trial documents say he had grabbed a pin and lunged toward a witness on the stand who was reportedly testifying against him that's when a marshal working security shot and killed Engelau. his parents have now followed, filed a wrongful death lawsuit Another update this morning, a U.S. judge strikes down a Utah law that landed Bruvies, the uh, movie theater here in Salt Lake, in trouble for serving alcohol during a showing of the movie Deadpool. The judge said state regulators violated Bruvies' freedom of speech. They said it was a First Amendment right when it threatened to fine the theater up to $25,000 under a law that prohibits serving alcohol during movies with simulated sex scenes. You may remember the case caught the attention of Deadpool star Ryan Reynolds, who donated $5,000 to help pay the theater's legal bills last year. 6.05 right now. Let's go to southeast Texas this morning. Two major efforts are now underway. Rescue efforts continue in areas where floodwaters are still rising. While in neighborhoods where the water has started to recede, residents are starting what may be the most difficult task here in the wake of Harvey. This is it. Everything, about everything we own was destroyed. It's overwhelming. You don't, if you stop, you'll just cry. Meanwhile, authorities are now raising Harvey's death toll to 39 almost a week after that storm slammed into the Texas coast. President Trump is expected to visit Texas again tomorrow. And since last week, we would just want to say a big thank you for the outpouring of support has been shown here from our friends in Utah, uh, for those impacted by the storm. As of last night, we have raised more than $840,000 for the victims of Harvey in our Hope for Houston campaign. We're still going as well. If you'd like to donate, we don't have the phone lines up right now. We do have the link up at ksl.com right at the top of the homepage. The easiest thing you'll do all day, you'll feel great about it. And as we've been said, I think it's been said best that we want to give a million dollar hug to those down in Texas. And uh, we're going to make it this weekend. So jump on in, join and help us at KSL.com. In politics this morning, Harvey's record rainfall will funnel as many as 100,000 more claims into a flood insurance program which protects millions of homeowners, but it's set to expire on September 30th. Joining us live is NPC, NBC's Tracy Potts and Tracy Congress really has a decision to make here on that flood insurance program, among other things. Right, Lori, because not only is it set to expire at the end of the month, but it's $25 billion in debt. So before Harvey even hit, this was a problem that Congress had to deal with. Separate from that, of course, are the billions in relief, uh, emergency relief that they could be looking at for these storm victims. So a lot of money dealing with Harvey as soon as Congress gets back on Tuesday. But that's not the only thing they have to deal with. The CHIP program, Children's Health Insurance, that's expiring this month. The FAA authorization, the Federal Aviation Administration that oversees safe air travel in this country, that expires this month. They've got to deal with both of those. The budget deadline is at the end of this month, and even if they choose to continue it, some action must be taken to avoid a government shutdown. And we're about to hit the debt ceiling, the limit of what the U.S. can borrow to pay its bills. The U.S. doesn't pay its bills, we go into a default. Lawmakers have said that won't happen, but they have to take action for it not to happen. So those are all fairly urgent items that Congress has just a few weeks to deal with when they get back starting Tuesday. And they do need to deal with it. NBC's Tracy Potts live on Capitol Hill for us. Let's hope Republicans and Democrats can come together in the wake of this natural disaster. Andrew. All right, Lori, thanks. Appreciate that. Still ahead this morning, after dash cam video captured the moment an alleged drunk driver slammed into a North Carolina school bus, we're now hearing from the driver of that truck for the first time. I do apologize for everything. I know apologies only go so far to the kids and to the parents. The driver. More from the driver who's calling what happened a wake up call. Plus, it was opening night at Rice Eccles Stadium. Utes and the Fighting Hawks of North Dakota. We'll have a look at the highlights breaking down last night's big game. Rod Zundel coming up next. All right, and weatherwise, uh, things are looking pretty good today. Lots of sunshine, Andrew, through the day. We're taking the dark clouds out of the forecast. Air quality 
And maybe still not the best news here. We're in the yellow, moderately unhealthy air. Most counties along the front. Little exception, though, Cash, uh, Duchesne, Uinta counties. The uh, air quality is looking a little better today. Lots of sunshine on this Friday. Again, the dark clouds are out. And our temperatures, yeah, about where we've been lately. We're actually a little cooler this morning. You might notice the difference there uh, early on. Maybe even a light jacket uh, initially. 88 at noon, we're up to uh, 4 p.m. and 92 degrees. The temperature, that's way above the average yet again. And lots of sunshine by uh, evening hours. Uh, late into the uh, evening, of course, we get the clear skies. Temperatures will cool into the upper 80s. I-15 south, if you're going from Cedar City to St. George this morning, roads are dry, clear skies. Temperatures are into the 50s. And tomorrow morning, FM 100.3, you can catch me on the radio, 6 to 9. Seven days coming up, I'll tell you how much hotter it's going to be for Labor Day on the way.